this is Sunday. As a matter of fact, this is the last Sunday of month of March. So usually what we do, we greet our families who have a birthdays and anniversaries. So that's what I'm going to do. You can stand up in your house if you want to. So I'm going to give the names. Birthdays for the month of April. We have Valerie Hack, Pat Sampson, Mary Leroy, Ronnie Watkins, Glinda Gray, Pat Caesar, India. I have to say India. Faye Benson, and of course, Melanie. That is Melanie, my daughter. Thank you, Lord. So, happy birthday. I look on my right. There is nobody on the keyboard. There is nobody to sing. And of course, I am not going to sing. You know, a lot of people were calling me saying they were expecting me to sing that song. It will all end in praise. You know, I'm smarter than that. So, all these... Valerie and Pat and Mary and Ronnie and Glinda and Pat and Indy and Faye and Mello. Happy birthday. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may God turn all these things around. And may you have a wonderful, wonderful brand new year. Happy birthday. Now, the couples. Anniversaries in the month of April. We have Brother Lucius, Regina Patrick, 33 years. And what a testimony Brother Lucius gave us. Thank God for their life, their marriage, 33 years. We have a Tiffany and Michael Cobry, 9 years. And of course, Pat and Place Thompson, 42 years. So here we go. Lucius and Regina Patrick, Michael and Tiffany Cobry, Pat and Place Thompson, may God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful brand new year. And may God bless your marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have been talking to you about the crisis that we are going through. Holy Spirit is ahead of the game. Like I have mentioned to you, Lord already had mentioned and had asked us to do one thing. Do not fear. So I'm not going to go into all the scriptures. You should have your notes. Do not fear. This is the word of the Lord, Rema word for Covenant Family Church. So today, I want to bring a message of hope. And I'm going to title this, There is Life After Crisis. Say it. There is life after crisis. There is life after crisis. And my text is from the book of Job, 42nd chapter, verse number 12. Job 42, verse 12. I will hook that scripture up at the end of the message in my conclusion. But say it, there is life after crisis. Talking about Job, he did not die in crisis. And guess what? I have said it and I'm saying it again. I will not die, but live and declare the works of the living God. He did not die in crisis. And I don't know, I'm not a scholar, but some of the scholars say that 
his crisis lasted eight or nine months. We don't know, but we know one thing, that he came out of the crisis. After the crisis, he lived 140 years, saw his children, his grandchildren, up to four generations. And I love this one. He received double for his trouble. And I know a lot of people have lost jobs. And now I'm talking in a term of finances. A lot of people have lost their finances in their 401k or retirement. Listen to this. Job had a life after the crisis. He received double for his trouble. From 7,000 sheep he lost. Now he has 14,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camels. Now he has 6,000 camels. He had 500 yoke of oxen. Now he has 1,000 yoke of oxen. He had 500 donkey. He got 1,000 donkey. What I am saying, I am saying, let me speak the word of God. When the enemy steals, John 10 and 10 says, it is the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm not looking to the devil to restore me, restore my finances. Nobody can restore like God. And I prophesy over to you, God will restore all that is stolen from you in the name of Jesus. May God double what you have lost in the name of Jesus. So, I have three points of this message. And again, I have been talking about this crisis. So, let us talk about point number one about the crisis. Crisis is an event. It's an event. When we feel hopeless, helpless, we feel like we have no control over it. So crisis is an event. Number two, you have enough time to read scripture this week. So read the third chapter of book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter number three. Word of God says to everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. And let me talk to you. We already know seasons are not permanent. Seasons are temporary. It will change. So this crisis is temporary. Wednesday night when I was talking to life of Paul, I mentioned to you in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, all his crises, he said, these temporary light afflictions. So I'm telling you, keep hope alive. I don't know about you, but me, I love nice, warm, hot weather. So when it is cold, what keeps me going? Uh-huh. This is not going to last. Summer will come. So thank God I keep my hope alive, knowing that this season is temporary. This season is temporary. So now, let me talk to you what happens in a crisis or the effect of crisis. Let me talk to you. It might produce fear. 
trauma, depression, despair, frustration, anxiety, worry, hopelessness, helplessness, loneliness, abandonment, loss, or even death. These are the effects of crisis. So no matter where you are in this, like I said, every season is temporary. Every season will change. So keep your hope. These two shall pass. Keep your hope alive and God will help us. So I mentioned to you about crisis, the effect of crisis. My point number two, what to do? And again, I'm not going to repeat myself, but I'm going to say it. Do not fear. I already have given you scripture. When I am afraid, I will call on God. Or when I call on God, I will not be afraid. God is our strength. He is our refuge. He is very present help in time of trouble. He is the Lord who has promised us. No matter what we go through. Remember, I have taught you. We are going through, but we are going to. This season will end. We are going through this crisis right now. But remember, these two shall pass. Do not fear. Like I mentioned, during crisis, you feel helpless and hopeless. You feel that you are not in control. But remember one thing. God is still on the throne. God is still alive and well. It is heaven rules. I've been teaching you during this crisis, when you feel like you are out of control, know that God is in control, but you can do one thing. You can control your thoughts and your words. Don't let the media control your thoughts. Don't let somebody else's words trigger fear inside you, but know that God is in control. So I talked to you about crisis, talked to you about what to do, but like I said, we're going to talk about Job today. So I'm going to unpack the whole book of Job in the next 10, 15 minutes. Now, what changed the whole situation, all circumstances? So let me just go ahead and give you these two things which he did, and then we'll hook it up at the back. Number one, pray. I'm talking about what Job did. Pray. Job 42 and 10. Bible says when Job prayed, for his friends who were acting like enemies. He prayed for them. So let me ask you one thing. I know you're complaining there's nothing to do. Let me tell you what to do. Get you a piece of paper and write down the names of all those who have hurt you who have betrayed you, who have broke your heart. And pray for them like Job did. And your things will turn around. There is life after crisis. But learn to pray. Jesus Christ said that. Pray for those who have hurt you. Pray for your enemies. Love them. Pray for them. Do no evil to them. As a matter of fact, do good to them. Number one thing what Job did was prayed for his friends who were acting like no friends at all. 
No, he didn't call fire of God upon them. He didn't curse them. Or in your case, he didn't curse them out. But he prayed. That was Job 42 and 10. Second thing Job did. Now this is years later. Here comes James. James 5 verse 11. James 5 verse 11. Word of God says now you know. Not you think, not you believe. We say you know about the patience of Job. Meaning what? He was steadfast. You remember in chapter 1 when all these things happened in one day, he said that he changed his clothes, put on sackcloth, put on ashes, sat and worshipped God and did not blame God. Yes, he had lots of questions. We will talk about that here in a minute. But he was steadfast in his walk, in his praise, in his worship. Job prayed for his friends. Then James 5, 11 says, he was patient and steadfast. Let's go. Job, in one day, listen to me. He didn't know why the crisis happened. Something is going on up in heaven. God and Satan, God and Satan. But here he is. Now watch this. Bible say he was the richest man on the face of the earth. Rich and yet holy man. Wow. So you can be rich and still be holy. As a matter of fact, the word of God says he was a holy man, man of integrity. Integrity meaning wholeness does not crack. Under pressure. What you see is what you get. Wholeness. He was holy man. He was a whole man. Walking in integrity. He had blessed a lot of people. Because he was rich. And yet. The crisis came. Like I said. Thank God for President Trump. Every single day. When he talks about people dying, people losing their job. He said, you know what? This crisis, they had nothing to do with it. Thank God for President Trump. Continue to pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence and all those who are working with him. So, Job, all these things happen. Listen to this. In one day, not over a period of nine months, in one day, in one day, he lost all of his livestock. And let me talk to you one thing. I was just thinking, why did the devil attack the livestock? You know why? Because Job used to kill and sacrifice the blood offering. And the devil said, you know what? I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to kill. That causes hedge of protection around you. So Job lost all, all of his livestock. I already told you what he lost. He lost all the people who were working with him, working for him. Then he lost seven sons and seven daughters. My God. Seven sons, seven daughters. Ten graves in one day. All is gone. And now his health is gone. He's full of sores. 
friends came. In the beginning, they were good. Oh, my Lord, yes, they were good. They sat with him, didn't say nothing. But after a while, they broke the silence and then say, you know, Job, maybe you deserve this. Maybe you are not all that man of integrity. Something you did, or you had it coming. So they started accusing him and all that and blamed him. But that's not the point. Point is this, God is not talking to Job. In the first chapter, he was talking to Satan. God is not talking to Job, but he was talking about Job, which Job didn't know. My God. So God is silent for 37 chapters out of 42. It appears God is absent. Job had lots of questions, like I have questions, like you have, like all of us, all over the world, we have questions. Where is God when all this thing happened? We don't know how to go about. He had lot of questions. And Bible says, then God broke his silence. Finally, chapter 38 to 41, God broke his silence. And you know, you and I, probably we might think, maybe, maybe, maybe when God spoke, he would say, Job, man, 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 I'm so proud of you. Job, why? I know I was bragging on you. You didn't let me down, man. I, oh, man, Job, you are right. You my man. God didn't say, Job. Man, I feel, oh, man, I feel you. But you. Do you know what? God don't say nothing. God doesn't comfort him. God doesn't answer him. God doesn't explain him. When Job had questions, God is answering him by questions. Wait a minute. Job, 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 I know. God, I'm asking you questions. It's not for, for you. Not to answer me, not to comfort me. But going to ask me questions. And God say, okay, Job. Since you have all these things going on, I'm going to ask you. And you know what? It'd be interesting for you. Like I have said, huh? read the Bible. Study the word of God. I don't have time to do all that. You go time. Go ahead and do it. Read 38, 39, 40 chapter of Job. Let me summarize in those three chapters, what happens? God said, Job, I created the universe. Uh, where was you when I created this? God started talking about the space, the sun, and the moon, and the stars. And galaxy, God say, where was you? Do you know? Do you understand? It is not fair for God to ask these questions. I'm talking in a natural. Because Job is not healed yet. He still has lost his possession. Seven sons, three daughters. He had lost all. He is still sitting. Full of boys in agony and pain. And God, Father of all comfort, God of all peace, is not revealing any answers. But he is asking him questions. 
Where was you? Do you know? Do you understand? Then he talks about the sun and the moon and the stars. He talks about the animals, the alligator and hippopotamus. He talks to me about the birds and the plants. You know what is he saying by asking all these questions? And watch it. Job is quiet. He ain't saying nothing. He listened to all these questions, but he's meditating on the question. And Job came to conclusion. I know what you're saying, God. You are the creator. You are the sustainer. You are the one in control. So if you can handle the universe, the space and the sun and the moon and the stars, if you can handle the alligator and the crocodiles, the birds and the plants and the trees, you know what? I got you. I got you. I got you. You will handle this because you are my creator. You are the one true and living God. And you are the one I worship. So I got you. You don't have to answer me nothing. By asking questions, you answered me. Job, you are in the palm of my hands. I got you. Jesus comes and say, you, the child of God, you are in my hand, and my hand is in the hand of God the Father, and nobody can snatch you out of my hand. During this crisis, stay in the hand of Jesus. Stay in the hand of God, and nothing is going to snatch you from the hand of God. So Job understood. Still in boil, still in agony, still in pain. And this is what I want you to know. In a crisis, God does not answer you, but he reveals himself to you. Now that is worth shouting. You need to shout in your house. God will reveal himself to you during this crisis. How does he reveal to you? And you can read this thing in Job 42 verses 1 through 6. Job 42 1 through 6. Read it. Number one, God revealed himself to Job. I am the Almighty. There is nothing too hard for me. Nobody can stop me. I am Almighty. I am all powerful. You are in crisis, but your crisis does not stop me being Almighty and all powerful. That's a lesson number one. During this crisis, God is almighty. God is all powerful. There is nothing he cannot do. Nothing can stop him. Number two, not only that he's almighty, he's powerful. He is a sovereign God. He is in control. He has a purpose for you. That's what Job understood. Job didn't know what was going on between God and Satan. He understood what God has declared over my life. God will bring it to pass. Let me say something. I don't know about you, but I'm talking about me, my life. The word of the Lord in my life was... Jeremiah 1, before I was born, before I was conceived in my mother's womb, he called me, 
He chose me. He anointed me. He appointed me. Prophet unto the nation. Prophet over the kingdom. Meaning, the word of God before I showed up is still the word of God. Crisis does not stop the word of God over your life. Psalm 139, how wonderfully, how marvelously God created you. He created you with a purpose and his purpose in your life shall come to pass. Nothing will stop it. Not this crisis. Number three. Again, let me back up. God is almighty. He is all powerful. Number two. God is in control. He's a sovereign God. Number three. You know what? Isaiah 55 says, His ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. God Almighty. I cannot understand Him. But you know what? When I don't understand, I know his heart. He has a plan for me. He has a plan for me. He has a purpose for me. I don't understand the process. But I'm going to trust him. We're almost done. And number four, like I said, it's a all and in praise. It will all end in praise. Why? Job said, you know what? I had heard of you. I had heard of you. That you almighty, you are in control, you are a soul. I had heard. But I know. I see you now. So I repent. I humble myself. And I rest in you. So I can receive. This double portion, I receive life after the crisis. My point is this. During this crisis, God is revealing to you as almighty, in control. He has a plan. He has a purpose. You don't understand the process. But you know what? You will see him. Like you have never seen him before. My God. In everything give thanks. But this is the will of God. And people don't like to hear. Paul say. For. Everything. In this crisis. You will come closer to God. Like I mentioned to you last Sunday. God is speaking loud and clear. Telling the whole world, come to me. Receive the free gift of salvation. He telling his people, the church, trust me. I got this. I got you. My plan will not fail because of this crisis. You will be all right. You will be all right. So my concluding thought is repent, humble ourselves, rest in God, and receive the double portion. Let me close with the same scripture. Job 42, 12. After this, Job lived long life. After this, he saw his seven sons and three daughters. Oh, by the way, God doubled everything in the natural. Why did God not give him 14 sons and six daughters? People always ask me that question. Do you know why? Because in chapter 1, those three sons and three daughters who died, they were alive. They had just changed their location. Like Paul said, 
those who are dead believe in God. They are not dead. They are more alive than we are on the earth. So, he still had 14 sons, 6 daughters. Everything God doubled. My message to you this. This season will change. Keep hope alive. You will be fine. And I am saying there is, there will be life more abundantly than when we went through. We will come out more blessed, more prosperous, more closer to God, more on fire for God than ever before. Let me pray. My Father, my God, in Jesus' name, I thank you. In the middle of this crisis, I thank you. That you are God, almighty, all-powerful. You are the sovereign God in control. You have a plan and purpose for us. When we pray, you will hear us. I pray not only for America, I pray for over the whole world. My father, I pray for my brother Satish and his family. 1.3 billion people in India. Locked in for 21 days. My God, we cannot understand all these things. But we will trust you. Because you are good. And your mercy endures forever. This shall pass. It will all and in praise, why there is life after crisis. May God bless you. May God bless your family. And all is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. So, as usual, let me receive your tithe and offering. But remember this thing. Over there in heaven, he receives your tithe and offering who lives forever, that is Jesus. So, go to covenantfamilychurchtulsa.com covenantfamilychurchtulsa.com Click on Donate Online Giving. Or, if you have a PayPal, go to covenantfc at tulsacoxmail.com covenantfc at tulsacoxmail.com Thank you for being so steadfast in your giving. Like Job, pray and be steadfast. And we are looking forward to life after this crisis. Amen. I have one more announcement, but I'm going to let Miss Cynthia Davis make that announcement. Some of you know, some of you do not know. Covenant Family Church, we love kids. We have a Covenant Family Academy, and Cynthia is going to talk to you about that. Listen, don't turn it off. Listen to this next announcement, and God bless you. I will see you Wednesday night, same place, same time, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, family and friends. What an inspirational and encouraging message from Pastor. Amen. There is life after crisis. Praise the Lord and keep our hope in the Creator. He's Almighty. Praise the Lord. Well, again, I'm Cynthia Davis. For those who do not know me, and Pastor, I've already introduced me. I am the principal at Covenant Family Academy. And I just want to take this opportunity to let you know that we are now enrolled in students pre K age four through second grade for the school term of 2020 through 2021. And of course, our mission is to build covenant relationships with our parents, our student family, and our community. And our vision, of course, is to provide students with a high quality, well-rounded education that encourage our students to develop covenant relationships with God Almighty and with others as they pursue higher education, ministry, or career. And, ed and ed educationally-wise, our focus is on individualized learning, and that means students learn at their own pace, promoting autonomous learning. 
And also, we use biblical principle to teach our students character building skills. So for more information about us and enrollment process, you can call or text 918-924-0544, or you visit our website at covenantfamilyacademy.com. That's covenantfamilyacademy.com. And on our website, you can download this brochure to give to someone that has children ages pre-K-4 through second grade that you may know. So I just want to thank you for all your support and your prayers. And I'm praying that God continually blessings upon you in every area of your life and your family with relationship with God, relationship with others, spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. In Jesus' name, blessings be your portion. Amen. Amen.